Okay, so this is um, all about limiting factors in the Calvin cycle. Now, if you're approaching this kind of question, it's a good idea to have the Calvin cycle um, somewhere on the paper. It's much easier to refer to it and work out what's going on with things. So it's always a good idea to try and sketch this out. Here's my simplified Calvin cycle. Um, glycerate phosphate, triose phosphate, right below is bisphosphate. And of course, we've got a phosphorylation here and here by ATP and a reduction of GP to TP here, reduced NADP um, to NADP. The extra hydrogens are used to reduce GP to TP. Now that will become important to us in a second. Um, the limiting factors themselves, we'll go through one by one. Uh, we'll start off with carbon dioxide. Now, if you want to follow this on your book, it, it's in on page 72-73. The graphs, I think, are a little confusing, and there's a reason for this. So, as it appears in your book, looks something like this, um, and up the side we've got the relative concentration of these substances. So we're going to look at what happens to R, U, B, P, G, P, and T, P. The problem is, I think, this time relative concentration. It's not giving you an actual number it's saying how much does one change in response to another. So, for example, if RUBP, and I'm just going to make a number up here, let's just say there were 10 units of RUBP and 30 units of GP. If for some reason we got rid of the GP and it went down to 5, there is now relatively twice as much RUBP as there is GP. So it's relative, it's a comparison between the two things. It's not giving the actual number, it's relative to it. Okay. So what's happening with carbon dioxide? Well, if we have ideal conditions for plants, or even favourable conditions, uh, for example about 0.04% concentration of carbon dioxide, which is the normal concentration in the air, there isn't actually that much... RUBP present. Why not? Well, it's all getting converted into GP. So under normal conditions, you won't get much RUBP in the plant cell. It will be converted to GP because we've got plenty of carbon dioxide present. If, however, we limit the amount of carbon dioxide, for example, if we put it down to 0.01%, um, The amount of RUBP relatively increases. Why does it do that? Well, if there's no carbon dioxide present, we can't go any further in our cycle. That's not present, so we get stuck with the RUBP and relatively it builds up. What's happening to the other compounds that are present? Well, if we take um, glycerate 3 phosphate, normally in the Calvin cycle, when there's plenty of um, carbon dioxide present, we're making lots of glycerate phosphate. As soon as we have taken out the carbon dioxide, it's effectively stopped the Calvin cycle in its tracks, so we don't get any more GP made. So that will drop right off. And if the GP, if we're not making any glycerate 3 phosphate, we're certainly not going to be making any triose phosphate. So triose phosphate will also, relatively speaking, decrease. Now, what happens in the case of another limiting factor? For example, let's take light. Well, again, we'll have the same type of graph. We'll label all of it. This time, however, we'll use, rather than concentration of carbon dioxide, we'll use light intensity. Um, so if there's plenty of light around, high light intensity, I'll just put low, rather than writing it all out. So again, let's look at it under ideal conditions. What's going to be happening um, when there's lots of light? Well, in this case, our glycerate phosphate, 
there isn't too much of it around. Why? Let's go back to the Kelvin cycle. The light is needed in the light dependent reaction and the light dependent reaction is supplying us with reduced NADP and ATP. So as long as there's plenty of light around that glycerate phosphate is quickly getting converted into triose phosphate. So in light high light conditions we've got plenty of glycerate phosphate, uh, sorry not much glycerate phosphate around it's being converted very quickly. As soon as we um, turn off a light or in low light conditions we are not making NADP, reduced NADP and ATP anymore. So we've effectively stopped the Kelvin cycle at that point. So the amount of glycerate phosphate, relatively speaking, increases. It builds up. It's not getting converted. We've still got plenty of carbon dioxide around, presumably, so we can still get that GP, but relatively speaking, the amount's gone up. What's happening to our other molecules, well RUBP, ribulose bisphosphate, relatively speaking drops off. Why? Well, going back to our Kelvin cycle, we've stopped our Kelvin cycle at this point, so we aren't making any triose phosphate, so that's not getting converted into ribulose bisphosphate. So the ribulose bisphosphate is going to decrease triose phosphate is an easy one because that's going to do exactly the same as with uh, low carbon dioxide levels. It will drop off. Why? Because we've stopped this stage in the Kelvin cycle. If that's not present from the light dependent reaction, we can't make any triose phosphate, so the amount goes down. So if I was to quickly summarize that, um, in CO2, if that's the limiting factor, if we uh, reduce the amount of CO2 available, triose phosphate goes down, glycerate phosphate goes down, and ribulose bisphosphate increases. If light is the limiting factor, then triose phosphate, same as before, decreases, glycerate phosphate builds up relatively, and RUPB. Um, goes down. I'm going to deal with temperature on a separate video.